What's going on guys, I'm the Walrus Jedi, and in today's video I begin my coverage of The Clone Wars with the Clone Wars movie review. This was released in theaters August 15th, 2008, and it serves as a lead-in to the series, which did debut on Cartoon Network October 3rd of the same year. It was directed by Dave Filoni and produced by George Lucas as an executive producer and Catherine Winder. Henry Gilroy, Scott Murphy, and Stephen Milching serve as writers, and it starred the following. Matt Lanter as Anakin Skywalker, Ashley Eckstein as Ahsoka Tano, veteran Obi-Wan Kenobi voice actor James Earl Taylor from the 2D Clone Wars and the Revenge of the Sith video game, D. Bradley Baker as the clones, but he also comes from voicing some characters from Jedi Knight 3 and voiced Boba Fett in Force Unleashed 2. Tom Kane as the narrator, Yoda and Admiral Yularen, but Tom Kane has also voiced characters in other stuff like Yoda in Star Wars Clone Wars, Republic Commando, Revenge of the Sith video game, Battlefront 1 and 2, and he's Lebo in Shadows of the Empire and a bunch of other things, but I think that's enough. Nika Futterman as Asajj Ventress, Ian Abercrombie as Chancellor Palpatine, Catherine Tabor as Padme, who previously voiced the Twi'lek, Mission Vow, in Knights of the Old Republic, and is also the voice of Leia in Force Unleashed 1 and 2, and Vet in Star Wars The Old Republic. And reprising their roles from the movies, Anthony Daniels as C-3PO, Samuel L. Jackson as Mace Windu, and Sir Christopher Lee as Count Dooku with music by Kevin Kiner. This movie was received poorly by critics, but was considered a hit with a 68.3 million worldwide haul and a budget of only 8.5 million. And I had the privilege to go and see this movie in the theater as it is released near my birthday, which is August 17th. I was nine years old when I saw this movie. Before I get to the review, if you are enjoying the video, then please consider liking and subscribing and hitting the notification bell for more coverage on the Clone Wars and uh, other videos like that. Without further ado, let's get to the review. A galaxy divided. Striking swiftly after the Battle of Geonosis, Count Dooku's droid army has seized control of the major hyperspace lanes. The movie begins with a narration to set up the movie. These narrations will come standard for the whole series, and these have a war propaganda feel to them. After the narration, we see Chancellor Palpatine's office. He is talking to Jabba the Hutt. Jabba reports his son missing and asks the Jedi for help in return. The Republic will get access to routes in Hut space. They agree to help and will send Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker to rescue the Hutlet. However, on Christophsis, the former master and Padawan are in need of reinforcements and supplies. The droid attack retreats to come back with a shield activated to protect them. Ahsoka Tano is sent, and she tells Anakin and Obi-Wan they are needed back at Coruscant immediately, but they can't as they are not done on Christophsis. And much to Anakin's chagrin, Ahsoka is also to be his Padawan. They see the Separatists come back under the protection of their shield, so Anakin and Ahsoka decide to go and disable it while Obi-Wan and the other clones basically hold off the, the droids and distract them. Yeah, so they manage to, Anakin and Ahsoka manage to take the shield down, and yeah, and that's when the uh, reinforcements arrive. So they mop up the droids, and Yoda came with the reinforcements, and he tells them that Jabba's son has been kidnapped, so Anakin and Ahsoka will go to Teth, where that's the last known location of the Hutlet, and go rescue him while Obi-Wan goes to Tatooine to negotiate with Jabba the Hutt. So Anakin and Ahsoka arrive on Teth and have a bit of a competition to see if Ahsoka can keep up with Anakin as they scale the cliff to the monastery. They take out the droids and enter the monastery, they find the Hutlet, who is sick, and they leave via an alternate landing platform. We also discover that the Separatists took Jabba's son, 
to pin it on the Jedi and have the Jedi and Jabba fighting. Obi-Wan arrives on Teth and engages the droid reinforcements after finishing on Tatooine. Dooku tells Jabba the Jedi took his son and shows him a hollow of Anakin and Ahsoka stuffing Rhoda in a backpack with Skywalker commenting that he hates huts. Anakin and Ahsoka escape on a beat-up old ship, and after an attempt to get to the Venator to get medical attention for the hutlet, they just decide to go to Tatooine in the ship. They do find a medical droid on the ship, and they help the hutlet get at least to, in a stable condition. On Teth, Obi-Wan and Ventress duel. She flees. Anakin is shot down on Tatooine, and he crashes. They set out for Jabba's palace. They split up, Anakin to distract Dooku and duel him, while Ahsoka has the hutlet. Meanwhile, on Coruscant, Padme goes to Jabba's uncle, Zero, who is on Coruscant, uh, to negotiate. The hut says no and dismisses her, but she comes back and discovers Zero is included with the in the kidnapping plot, but she is discovered and imprisoned. However, a com link goes off and 3PO basically sees Padme and hears her mess hears her, you know, calling for help, so help arrives, rescues Padme, and arrests Zero. The Hutlet is returned to Jabba, and just when Anakin and Ahsoka are about to be executed, Padme calls and tells Jabba of Zero and Dooku's treachery. They have a treaty, and that's where the movie ends. What I liked. Uh, it's nice that some of the cast from the movies returned, like, you know, Samuel Jackson, Christopher Lee. That's awesome. You know, Anthony Daniels does a lot of C-3PO stuff, so that's... It's still cool, but, you know. Uh, I like Teth. I think that was an interesting little location. Kind of an interesting, you know, where they're scaling the cliffs and that. So it was, it was a fun little part of the movie. And I do think it is cool that we got a movie for this. However, it is a bit of a afterthought. Um, because realistically, if you would have decided to make a movie to start the Clone Wars, and kind of show it off and lead in, I think you would have probably thought of a better story. Because these are just uh, a few episodes of the show just mushed together. Um, so there's that. What I didn't like. Ahsoka is a bit much in this, and she shouldn't have bested three Magna Guards on her own on Tatooine. I think that's it's too much. She's she's fresh out of being a, a youngling, basically. So, that's too much. Anakin and Dooku dueling, literally a couple months after Attack of the Clones, is a little, like, why? And this show has that problem where characters duel that probably shouldn't duel. And then Birth of Sky Guy and Snips, which thankfully doesn't last very long in the series. So that's good. And just to keep a track of the lightsaber duels throughout this, um, there is a Obi-Wan and Ventress duel and Anakin and Dooku duel. So I wonder by the end of the show, I wonder how many duels I'll count. And just for information, a duel basically is you know, two or more opponents, but every opponent has to have a lightsaber or lightsaber equivalent. And it has to be several clashes. It, it can't just be you have your lightsaber out, you, you clash, and then you run away. That doesn't count. That's not a duel. Overall, this movie, it's okay. Not the greatest thing ever, but it's not the worst thing you'll watch. I'd give it a 6 out of 10. This wasn't the most thrilling plot for a movie, but, you know. Well, that's the review for Star Wars, the Clone Wars movie. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the movie. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And until next time, thanks for watching.